Especially where it says, You found me, yes. you. you healed me, yes. you called me from the grave. Amen. You know, I wasn't even looking for him. That's right. I didn't even know I was in a grave. Amen. But he knew where I was, Amen. he knew what I needed, yes. and he sought me for months and months. I fought against him. But finally, I had to take that so called white flag, you know. Yes. And just I had to surrender because I couldn't take it anymore. Right. I knew I was lost. Right. I was undone. I was dying on, a way, my, on my way to a devil's hell. Right. And when I thought about it, I didn't want to go there. Right. I didn't, and he made the way for me to escape. So I said, I surrender, Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm so thankful that he did that for me. Amen. I just give him praise and glory and honor for that. And tonight... I'll be in, well, I'll be starting in chapter one of Malachi. If anybody's familiar with the book of Malachi, there's a lot of, God brings accusations against Israel and against the priests, and they're like, what, what are you talking about, God? Us? Sort of like us nowadays. What do you mean, God? I didn't do nothing. And God would tell them exactly what was going on in their lives and the things that he was upset with them about, the sin that they were in. You know, God will always let you know where you're at with him. Amen. He will always let you know if you're living the way he wants you to live or if you're not living the way he wants you to live. Amen. He will show you the sin in your life and he expects you to repent of it. Because he's your father, not only your father, he's your God, he's your savior, he's your Lord, and he expects you to follow him and do what's right in his eyes. You know, something, it seems like in the Christian world in America, it, it's got to the point where some Christian, and you know, Christianity here, where they just feel like, I just do whatever I want, I'm saved, I believe in Jesus, well, I might go to church today, I might not, oh, I might do this, I might not. You know, I just do whatever I want because I'm saved on my way to heaven. And it don't matter if I'm obedient or not. It don't matter if I listen to God. Because you know what? He will forgive me. I'll just claim 1 John 1, 9 where it says if I confess my sins, He's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. We shouldn't be living like that. Amen. He still says in His Word, Be ye holy... For I am holy. Amen. That's one of my daily prayers. Lord, make me holy. Yes. Make me more like your son, Jesus. I want to be a light to this dark and dying world. I want to be who you want me to be. Amen. I don't want to be, I don't want to follow my own path. I followed my own path for years and it led to a place That's of destruction. Right. I want to lead a path that leads people to Christ. Yes. I want to be light and salt in this lost and dying world like he said we are. And I pray that is all of our goals. I pray as Christians, you know, we can't account for everybody in America, all the Christians. We're here at GBC. Right. Amen. This right. is the church we belong in. This is where we serve the Lord. This is where we want to see people get saved. This is where we come to worship God Almighty. Right. And we need to be on fire for the Lord. Amen. We need yes. to honor Him. Yes. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight is honoring God. And I'll be in, like I say, Malachi chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 6 through 8 to start off. It says, a son, a son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts, unto you, O priest, that despise my name. Isn't that... The first accusation he brings against, it's not against the, the people, it's against the priest. The ones who know the law, the ones who were commanded to bring the sacrifices and help do the sacrifices unto God, and he's going right to the priest yeah. because they were the ones who are supposed to lead the people. Yeah. You know, if the leader of the people is not doing right, the people aren't going to do right. Amen. That's right. So God, God's going to bring it right out to the, he always, he's always going to go to the head. There you go. If the head's not following, he's going to go right to the head. Amen. In the family, if the head's, if the husband is not doing right, he's going to go to the husband. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, Eve was in trans, uh, deceived, but Adam was in the transgression, and God went right to Adam. 
even though the serpent went to eat first. And she did, she was deceived and got Adam to eat too. Yeah. But God went right to Adam. He goes to the leader. He goes right to the head. And he's going to the priest right here. And he says, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? Like, what are you talking about, Lord? Verse 7 says, you offer polluted bread upon my altar. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And here's what they're doing. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? Here they are. They, you know, let me put my Bible now because I'm going to get into my notes and stuff. My, just scriptures. All I've got is scriptures up here. I don't really have notes. But the priest knew better than to bring polluted animals, animals that were lame or blind or sick. Because in Deuteronomy 15, 21, the Bible says, and if there be any blemish therein, as if it be lame or blind or have any ill blemish, thou shalt not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. They were not supposed to bring sacrifices that had blemish. Because the sacrifices, when you read through the Old Testament, all the, most of the sacrifices point to Christ. And Christ was the perfect, spotless Lamb of God. And, Christ, and God expected the sacrifices they brought to be perfect, spotless, without blemish. Right. It says it right in, and the priests know that. The priests know what God expects in His Word. Because they study the Word. They learn the Word. That's why they're the priests. You know, you can't be the head of a church or a priest or whatever if you don't know the Word. That's right. That's right. You've got to know the Word. And they knew the word, and they were still letting the people. They've gotten so comfortable with God. I shouldn't even say comfortable. I think they got to the point where they didn't even care about God. They, they disdained God. They were at the point like, God, you, we'll honor you with our lips, so to speak, but our heart is just not in it. That's right. You know? Our heart, just like Jesus talked about the Pharisees, he says, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. It's one thing to be you can be obedient and do what's and do what God wants, but if your heart's not in it, it's getting you nowhere. There's got to be a heartfelt obedience with God Almighty. You just can't have one without the other. No, if, if you're up here, anybody in this church, singers, preachers, teachers, you know, people who just do the work around the church, whatever you're doing. If your heart's not in it, God's not pleased. That's right. That's right. He wants you to do it out of love for Him oh, amen. because He has saved you. He's like the song said, He set you free. He pulled you out of the grave. Yeah. He saved you from a place called amen. hell. And He expects you to serve Him with joy and gladness and with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's, right. yeah. That's how you yeah. honor God. Yeah. You know, like I said, you can be obedient, but if your heart's not in it, you might as well just quit doing That's it. That's right. I tell people that all the time. You can tithe all you want, but if, you, if you're hating the tithe, yep. you might as well keep it. Because right. God is not pleased with that if you're not giving it out of your heart. That's right. You read through the Bible, all through the Bible. It's with your heart. It's with your heart. Yes. It's all about your heart, your attitude of your heart. Why are you doing this? Do you love the Lord? Amen. Amen. I pray as if you love the Lord that you are doing everything you're doing because you love him Amen. and you want to glorify yes. him. Because yes. that's Amen. what glorifying, that's what honoring means. You yes. glorify him. That should be our goal. Amen. That should be our desire. Leviticus 22 21 and 22 says, And whosoever offereth the sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in beeves or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein, blind or broken or maimed or having a, a wind or a discharge or scurvy or scab or scab. You shall not offer these unto the Lord nor make an offering by fire of them upon the altar unto the Lord. It's clear from reading the Old Testament, they knew what they were to bring and what not to bring. Yes. What kind of sacrifices are we bringing to the Lord? Is he pleased with our sacrifice? You know, the Bible says we should offer him the sacrifice of praise. 
The fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name. Yes. You know, at Sunday morning at Sunday school, every time I have Sunday school, I say two things. Do you have any prayer requests? Do you have any praises? And if you have a praise, give God thanks. Yes. And as Christians, we should have a praise every day. Man, he woke you up this morning. He allowed you to come to church. He allowed you to breathe his air. He allowed you to walk on his earth. He allowed you to live another day. He allowed you to come into his presence and worship him. Yeah. You know, just think, Amen. just think, before Christ died, you had to go to the high priest, and he would go once a year into the Holy of Holies yeah. and meet with God to have your sins covered for another year. Because of Christ, the preacher was preaching this morning, Father, forgive them. Yes. When he died on that cross, the veil of the temple was ripped from top to bottom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now we have access into the throne room of God Almighty. Amen. We should have a praise every day on our lips just because of that. Yes. If you can't praise him because you're saved, something's wrong. Yes. Something's, so I'm expecting to hear a lot of praises in Sunday school anymore. I want to hear everybody start praising. Amen. I think we ought to have testimonies once in a while in the church. Right. I've heard them... Uh, Testimonies they used to do in the old time. You know, they had them popcorn testimonies. One person stand up, then another one stand up. All of a sudden, everybody's testifying. Oh, the Lord saved me. He's so good to me. You know, I don't, I don't understand why we don't want to testify about the goodness of God. How we're here in church. You can't testify in church about the goodness of God. Can you do it out in the world if you can't do it here? Come on, you know, I, you know I, I hope I don't hurt nobody's feelings, but this is just something on my heart. And it always has bothered me why people do not want to give a praise unto God while you're in the church. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 50, whosoever offereth praise glorifieth me. Yes. Amen. If you're yes. just offering praise, you are giving him glory. Ain't that what we are supposed to yes. do Amen. is give him glory? Amen. Goodness gracious. Anybody want to give him some glory right now? Huh? Well, let's hear some glory. Let's hear some glory. Yeah, there you go. Anybody want to give praise? You know? Anybody want to testify? I don't care. It's only 6.30. I've got another hour for the preacher, you know. I don't hear nobody. Oh, well. I just want to thank the Lord for waking me up. Amen. I mean, I mean it's just, we are, we are so blessed. You know, the preacher after service, are you blessed? Amen. Are you highly favored? Amen. We are blessed and highly favored. Sure. We are one of the redeemed. Sure. I thought years ago, I thought about getting tattoos. Then I thought, well, to pay somebody money to put me in pain, I just didn't like the idea. But I always thought on my forearm, redeemed on one, forgiven on the other. I just didn't want to pay money to be put in pain. I you know? <laughs> you know I just, I've heard people say, well, it's not that bad. I'll, I'll have a needle stuck in your arm, just do it all. I think it's going to be bad. But, you, but we are redeemed. Yes. We've been forgiven. Yes, amen. We have a praise on our lips. We have a testimony. The Bible says in Revelations 12 that they were made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Amen. Yes, amen. We have a testimony. Yes. I'm expecting to hear some testimonies. You know, before anybody can even think about honoring God, though, they got to become a child of God. Because the world has no desire to honor God. You go out in the world and just listen to them curse God, you know they don't want to honor God. You hear, you hear them talk, they have no desire to please God. So if you're not saved, you cannot even begin to please God. But when you get saved... You know, Romans 12, 1 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God. And when you see that word, mercies of God, you've got to read the first 11 chapters. And you read about all the mercies God has given you. He showed you you were a lost and undone sinner. You were headed to a devil's hell. He showed you the love of Christ dying on a cross. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. By his mercies, he says, we, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Remember in Malachi? They were bringing these torn animals. 
these animals with blemishes that were, were just worthless to God. Now he expects us to be that sacrifice. But we don't have to sacrifice ourselves. We sacrifice our bodies to be a living sacrifice unto him. Amen. A living sacrifice. That's how you honor God. When you present your body to him as instruments of righteousness, your mouth is an instrument of righteousness. Now, your hands and your feet, your eyes, everything about you is an instrument of right. You belong to God Almighty now. The Bible says that we've been bought with a price. Amen. The precious blood of Christ. We've been bought. That's right. We don't belong to ourselves. I got a dog. I bought that dog about 15 years ago. Trixie. Uh -huh. Paid $50 for her. She's my dog because I paid the price for her. I can beat on her. I can pet on her. I can do whatever I want with her because she's mine. Christ bought me. He can do whatever he Amen. wants with me. Yeah. And he expects me to yeah. obey him. Yeah. I wish my dog would obey like I should obey. Yeah. But that's a whole other story for a whole other day. But she's a good dog, huh, Michelle? Yeah, she is. But... He expects, look what he says after that, holy. He expects us to be holy. He expects it. But why? Because of his mercies. Because of what he's done for us. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. God doesn't think it's out of line for you to be like that. God doesn't think it's, it's no big deal for you to present your body to live. He gave his son to be a sacrifice for your sins. Can't you live for him? He died for you. Can't you live for him? Amen. Can you die for him if you may have to someday? Amen. You might have to someday. But that's the only way we honor God is by being a living sacrifice to him. Everything we do, it's about God now. Our time, our talents, treasures, it's all about honoring him with it. And I'm going to get into the time aspect now. Because we need to honor him with our time. Because yes, Ephesians 5.15 says, See then that you walk circumspectly or carefully, not as fools, but as wise. Verse 16 says, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. I did some research. In, a, in America, the lifespan for women is 79 years. That's the average lifespan. So that works out to 692,040 hours in your lifetime. Now you figure in a 24 hour period is, you know, a day. So you figure you got eight hours, you're probably working, eight hours you're sleeping. That leaves eight hours for whatever you choose to do. And then you know how many hours that works out to? 228,373.2 hours, women, that you have. How are we redeeming that time? How are you redeeming that time? Mm -hmm. Are you like just sitting around watching TV? Mm -hmm. Are you wasting your time just doing nothing? Are you praying? Yep. Are you reading the word? Are you sharing the, the gospel with people? Are you telling people about Christ? Are you redeeming that time? And you know, I know there's, you know, and we need time. I believe we need time with the family. You need to have time. And I believe working is redeeming the time. Sleeping is redeeming the time. You can't go without sleep too long. you got to have rest. But we need to redeem. That's 228, what was it? 228,373 hours that we have besides working and sleeping. You know, men's average age is 73 years, which is 639,480 hours. And that leaves with the other eight hours after the sleeping and eating and uh, working, 211,028.4 hours. We have that much time. And we need to be, be about the Father's business. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, was always about the Father's business. Amen. He brought everything that he did into the Father's business. He brought the Father's business into everything he did. But he was at the wedding of Cana. That's where he did his first miracle. He was having a good time. Mm -hmm. He may have danced with the bride. I don't know. But he did his first miracle there because he was about the Father's business. You can always bring God 
into your daily life. Amen. Amen. You can always bring the Lord up always. to people if you want to. Yep. You can just start talking to people. Hey, you go to church anywhere? Hey, do you know Jesus? You know, we still live in America. We're still allowed to talk about Jesus. Amen. You know, Amen. and we can redeem that time each day talking about the Lord, studying His Word, praying. I, I, I believe with all my heart when we get to glory, we're going to regret some of the times that we've just wasted. We're going to think, man, I wish I'd have prayed more. Man, I wish I'd have witnessed more. Man, I wish I'd have gave more of everything I have. Yep. Because I see all the beauty of heaven now. I see all the treasures there. I see Jesus Christ in his glory. And I think, man, I should have done more. I should have done more with the time I had. Because you know, just as the pastor preached this morning, you're not guaranteed to walk out this door. Right. You know, this might have been your last night to worship. Mm -hmm. Did you give it everything you got? Were you lifting up holy hands? Were you praising the Lord? Were you shouting the house down? Were you just saying, thank you, Lord? Were you worshiping God Almighty? Wouldn't it be great to go into, from this worship service into the Amen. most excellent worship Amen. service you'll ever be in? Yeah. Yeah. You know, Practice. Redeem the time. Redeem the time when you're here and practice for heaven. Because it's going to happen sooner or later. Mark it down. You're going to die one day. The Lord's coming back one day. Just be ready. That's what I tell people. Be ready. Because you never know when your last breath is going to come. Right. You go to a graveyard. You can see kids one day old. You can see people up to over 100 years old. But eventually, just like when you go through Genesis, it talks about this one died. And he died. And he died. And he died. You know what? They all died. They all died. You're going to die. You need to be ready. You need to redeem the time while you're here. Psalms 90 verse 10 says, The days of our years are threescore years and ten, which is seventy. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, which is eighty, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Verse 11 says, Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. Then verse 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Teach us. Anybody, you want to learn how to pray? Read the Bible and you see a verse like that. Say, Lord, teach me to number my days so that I can apply my heart unto wisdom. So that I can learn how to redeem this time while I'm here. You know, if we go by this, you know, the average lifespan of a male is 73 years. Well, I'm 62. I got 11 more. And if maybe I might have even more, might have less. But I need to number my days because they're drawing to a close. I'm closer to the grave now than I was 20 years ago. I'm closer to heaven now than I was 20 years ago. So I need to spend my days... By asking the Lord to help me to number my days, to apply my heart on the wisdom, to show me what's more important in this life now. Is it worrying about the things of this world, trying to get ahead, trying to make all the money you can, or is living for Christ what it's all about? Amen. Is that what it's about? Or is it everything of this world? I, I truly believe that if you take care of God's business, He's going to take care of your business. Amen. Amen. Everything will fall into play. Everything fall. You, you might go through troubles, trials. Anybody ever been through troubles Amen. and trials? You're going to go through them. But the Lord always delivers you out of them. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. And I know we've been through afflictions. We've all had problems. That's what life is about. We have problems. But God delivers us through all of them. So, Lord, teach us to number our days that we can apply our hearts unto wisdom. We need to make the most of this time we have here. We, I, I don't want to stand before the Lord and he say, Jerry, you wasted so much of your time. You sat there and watched football for six hours on Sunday. You could have been praying. You could have been studying the word. You could have been calling some of your friends, inviting them to church. You could have been doing this. You could have been doing that. Nothing wrong with watching football. Don't let it become an idol in your life, though. That's 
to where it takes more importance to you than God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with, you know, the things that we do in this life. Just don't let them become your God. Right. Remember, we need to number our days. If you all knew you were going to die next Tuesday, what would you be doing between now and then? Just something to think about. What would you be doing if you knew you were going home to glory next Tuesday? I guarantee your life would be different from what it is now. Amen. You'd be telling everybody, say, hey, you need to get ready. Hey, you need to get right with God. Hey, death's coming. Death is coming. You need to get right with God. Because you know what? You might not even make it to Tuesday. Let's ask the Lord to teach us to number our days. Amen. So that we can redeem the time that we have here. You know, the Lord, when you got saved, you know, the Holy Spirit has given us gifts. Everybody has a spiritual gift. Are you using that gift? Are you doing everything with the gift that God has gave you? 2 Timothy 1, 5 and 6 says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also, wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. You know, the word stir up means to, to, to fan it into fire. To get it going again. To use your gift. You ever hear the expression, if you don't use it, you'll lose it? Yeah. You know, you hear people, if you don't lose your muscles, they're just going to atrophy. God has gifted each and every one of us with something to do for his body. Are you using that for, your, for his glory and his honor? You know, I know right now we don't have many youth here. We don't have many little children. But we're going to need teachers. Is there any teachers in the church? People say, boy, I wish I could just get in the Bible more. You start teaching, you'll get in the Bible more. Amen. You know, I appreciate Terry, but she's got enough to do. She don't need to be teaching too. There's got to be somebody here that can step up and teach little children. Yes. That can teach teenagers. Maybe, 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 uh, maybe some of you men here, which ain't very many of us, maybe you can sing too. Maybe you can get in the choir. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I don't know. But you, know, you got to stir up that gift. You know, when, when I get a chance to teach or preach or anything, I'm like, I'll do it. Because I want to keep stirring up that gift. Mm -hmm. I want to get better at it. I want to dig more into the Word of God and get better at it and try and encourage people and help people. I want to see, I want to see sinners get saved by the grace of God. Amen. You know, I want to see God move while I'm speaking, while I'm teaching, or whatever the case may be. Because I want to, I want, that's the gift I have. Maybe I'm not very good at it, I don't know, but I know that's what God has called me to do. And I want to do it with everything I got. And every chance I get, I want to do that. Do I get tired? Yes, I get tired. You know, it's it's hard to study the Bible for hours at a time. And if you have never done it, it's hard to do. It's not just, it's not. Reading the Bible and studying the Bible is two different things. And when you get down and try and study the Bible, you're looking at the Greek and Hebrew. You're looking at references. You're reading commentaries. You're asking God, show me more, God. Holy Spirit, teach me. Show me. Help me to understand what this scripture is saying. It's hard work, but it's worth it. Because God will send you, all of a sudden, one of them nuggets will just come out of the Bible. He'll give you a treasure right from the word of God. Show you, like, ooh. Thank you, Lord, for that treasure, that nugget you gave me. But we all have gifts. Do you all want to help each other? Yeah. Yeah. Use the gift that God has given you to help one another. That's what it's about. Amen. It's to edify the body, to encourage the body. And we all need encouragement. We all need edifying. That's what it's all about. Anybody ever? Does anybody not need encouragement? We all need it, don't we? Yeah. we? You know, you know. so many, we get back to the so-called, some of this westernized Christianity. 
where everything's a bed of roses, you have no problems, you got your health, you got your wealth, everything's rosy. I must have been the wrong kind of Christian because everything ain't rosy right now. <laughs> Things ain't always going good right now. Things ain't always right. But God is there for us. Right. Yes. He's there for us. He's always there for us. You're not going to escape this life without problems, without trials, without... I said this morning, life ain't nothing but a test. Mm -hmm. We're tested every day. You go to work. People are cursing God. That's a test right there. Are you going to be quiet or are you going to say something? You know? It's a test. We need to redeem the time. We need to stir up that gift that's in us. You know, I appreciate the, the choir because I know they practice a lot. Because they're stirring up that gift. They're constantly practicing. They're wanting to, they're wanting to, do, they wanting to glorify God and honor Him. You know, the, uh, the pastor, when he preaches, I know he studies. I know he's digging into the word because he wants to glorify God. Devin back here, run the computer. Thank God they got somebody running the computers, huh? Okay. Amen? Amen. You don't know the problem they had trying to find somebody to run the computer. <laughs> and he likes it. He so we need, to sign, we need to sign him to like a 10-year contract. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to pay you nothing the first year, and after that, we're going to double it every other year. Amen? <laughs> Amen. That's a guarantee. Uh, pays lousy, but retirement benefits are out of this world, brother. I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. So stir up that gift within you. Because God, God don't give you a gift and not expect you to use it. You need to use everything God has given you for his glory, for his honor. Who, who wants to honor God? Amen. Do you, do you know the gift God has given you? You know, I didn't know, have no clue what gift I had when I got saved. I just know I wanted to do everything I could. I, I said, plug me into that one, plug me into that one, plug me into that You know, I'll do it. I'll try it. Trial and error. And here I am teaching, preaching, whatever you want to call it, Amen. you know. But this, that's what God, the gift he gave. Amen. He's got a gift for each and every one of you. Yes. Use it for his glory and his honor. Now we're going to talk about our treasures. Proverbs 3 and verses 9 and 10. It says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. You know, that word substance, it's, it's everything. Honor the Lord with everything you got and with the first fruits. You know what the first fruits were in the Bible, in the Old Testament? They were exactly that, the first fruits. When the first fruits would appear on the vine, they were to give that to God. Yes. They didn't know if there was going to be more, but God said give it. And they had to go on faith that God was going to give more. Oh, yes. You know? He says, honor me with the first fruits. You know, I believe in first fruit giving. You know, if I get paid, the first thing I do is I write out my check to the church. Amen. You know, that's my first fruits. And God takes care of the rest. Yes, he, does. he takes care of the rest. Because oh, yes. I want to, I'm not out to get rich. I'm not out to, you know, to have all these blessings. I just want to do what the word says. Yes. Honor the Lord yes. with my substance Amen. and with the first fruits mm -hmm. of all my increase. Yes. I just want to honor him. Then that's the only reason I do it, is to honor him. Well, I do want the church to succeed. Mm -hmm. I want the bills to be paid. You know, I'd love for the pastor to be paid. I think a preacher needs to be paid. Amen. You know, I'd love to see the new. I'm about ready to take that thing down. And we might as well throw it away because I'm not seeing no results. That's right. I'm not seeing no money coming in to build a new church. Preach. I'm not seeing, I'm not, the, the pastor put out a challenge, four or more. What was it called? Four or more? Four, four or more? 24. Four or 24. I'm not seeing us bring anybody into the church worthy to build a church with 400 people when we can't even get this fulfilled. That's right. That's right. I know that's kind of rough, but it's the truth. Are we going to be serious with God? Are we going to start to take Him serious? Am I going to? 
You know, I can, I can talk all this, tell you about it, see what the Word says, but you know, there comes a time when you just got to just say, just do it and go on and live yeah. for God. Yes. Amen. It's time to quit talking. Put action to the words and go out and bring the lost in. Go out and, and start giving more of your time. I pray every day for us here at the church. And I pray, Lord, burden our hearts for the lost. I don't think our heart is burdened for the lost like it should be. Do you know who knows who has lost family members? Amen. Who has lost Amen. people they work with? Do you realize if they die lost, they are headed for destruction? Yes. They are going to be in a place called hell, in a lake of fire forever? Does that burden our hearts any? Yes. Oh, yeah. Does it? We say it does, but I don't see no results. I'm not saying we don't try, but are we given everything we got? to bring people to Jesus Christ. Is it worth the ridicule? Is it worth the risk of being mocked? Is it worth the risk of somebody making fun of you? Is it worth the risk of losing your job? Is it worth the risk of losing your life to see a soul saved? Are we going to honor the Lord and get serious about it? Because if we're not, we might as well take that picture down of the new church because I don't see nothing happening in that area. I see God moving. I still am so, I'm still in awe of when Peggy got up and walked. Amen. Amen. That blew me away. Yeah. And I still get excited about that. And that's just nothing for God. It's, it's nothing for God to drop a million dollars into the offering plate so we can build a new church. But I think until he sees his people getting serious about it, he's not going to move. That's right. We need to get on the ball. Yes. We need to start some way. I, I don't know if we have a building fund. I don't know how it works. If we do, we ought to start, hey, put a little bit of extra money in an envelope, say, for building fund. If we just put, everybody put in a few dollars each week to see how God will make it grow. Start inviting people to church. Start witnessing. Honor the Lord. Honor the Lord with your mouth. Tell people about Jesus Christ. Bring them in. You know, he told us to go out to the highways and the byways. Bring them in. Compel them to come in. Compel them. Don't give them a choice. Keep on them. They're going to die and go to hell. Do you want any blood on your hands? I dare say we've all probably got blood on our hands. You know, Paul said, I'm free from all men's blood. I preached everywhere I went. I told everybody about Jesus Christ. I cannot say that. I cannot say that. It's time for me to redeem the time while I'm here so that people that I know will at least have heard the gospel. That at least they know that there is a God who heals, who saves, and yes. delivers. Amen. And we need to get serious about this. Yes. We're not here just to play church. Nope. We're here to win the lost. He told us to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. That's not a suggestion. That's a commandment. He's your Lord. Is he your Lord? Yes. And he's commanding us to do that. And as our, as our being our Lord, we have no choice but to obey him. Are we going to obey him? Are we? Are we? I want to see God move in a great way here. I, I want to see sinners walking down this aisle, broken by the Holy Ghost under the convicting power that he, that he has. Where they cry out to Jesus Christ to save them from a devil's hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the preacher said this morning, and he, I think he quoted Matthew 7, where it says, Enter in the straight gate, for wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Narrow is the way that leads to life. Yes. You know, in Luke's account, it says, Strive to enter into that gate. Mm -hmm. You know, 
it's hard to get in that gate because people don't want to give up who they are. They don't want to give up their self-righteousness. They don't want to give up their pride. They don't want to give up being their own God. They don't want to go into that gate because they want to continue to live in their sins. And people need to strive to enter that gate. And we need to get into that. Once you get in that gate, you need to walk that narrow way. And that narrow way is following Jesus Christ, is doing what he commands us to do. And we need to follow him and be obedient to him. If, if we would just be obedient to him, this church would be packed. Mm -hmm. Because we would be on fire for him. If we love him with everything we got, live for him, mm -hmm. have our heart totally devoted to him, man, you couldn't, you couldn't build a big enough church. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying that as a body that we'll get that vision. That will, that will realize we need to honor God Almighty because He is God Almighty. You know, the next part of that in Proverbs in verse 10, it says, So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. He's, he's, he's going to prosper you. That doesn't mean He's going to make you rich necessarily. He may make you rich, but He's going to give you what you need. You're not going to go without, you know. The older I get, the, the more I realize I don't need half the stuff I've had in my life. I don't need the new cars. I don't need the, the fancy house. I don't need all this stuff. Anymore, just the less I got, the better, because that way I don't have to deal with all the other stuff. He takes care of me. He provides for me. Amen. He provides for each and every one. I'm sure we all can testify. You know, there's times in my life I've had a lack, and all of a sudden here comes a check in the mail unexpectedly. Yeah. Somebody gives me some money unexpectedly. Whatever the case may be, God always comes through. Yeah. Because if you honor him, he will honor you. Right, man. Yeah. So I pray that we will honor him. I'm going to close on this verse here in Malachi. Chapter 14 says, But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrifices unto the Lord a corrupt thing. And check out what he says. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. He is a great king. Amen. He is the greatest king. He is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Yeah. And we should do it, give everything we've got to him. Because the only thing, because he is a great king. Amen. You know, the world thinks that some of the leaders in this world, they think they're so great. Obama thinks he's so great. Biden thinks he's so great when he can remember his name. But that's another story for another day. But they think they're so great. They think they're going to overtake the world. They're going to be the ruler of the world. They're going to be the dictator of the world. They ain't nothing compared to God Almighty Amen. because he's the greatest king ever and he will always be king. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords and he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lived for. He's worthy to die for. And we need to get serious with God. You get serious with God, he'll get serious with you. And I want to get serious with God. Do you want to get serious with yeah. God? Amen. Do you want to do what he says? Do you want to honor him? Yes. You know, this is just a few of the things I came up with this week when I was checking this out and studying it. But all <coughs> honor is just always, it comes down to a heartfelt obedience okay. to his commands. Yes. That's what honoring God is. Obeying him, loving him. Because Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do you love Jesus? Yes. Amen. Keep his commandments and show it. It's what I can, I can go around all day. Yeah, I love you, Jesus. Oh, I ain't gonna witness for you though. No, no, I don't want to do that. Oh no, I don't want to give no money. I got I got bills to pay, Lord. Oh, I don't want to do that. Oh Lord, I can't do that. I can't do that. But I do love you. That's not honor. That's not love. No. That's not. That's lip service. That's it. You honor him with your lips, but your heart's far from him. Yes. Where's your heart? That's where your treasure will be at. Where's your heart? Amen. Is it in the things of God? Is it in the things of the world? Is it just focused on you? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Are we going to honor Him? Me, 
As Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right. Amen. Because I want to honor him. Yes. You can't go wrong with God. Nope. You can't go wrong with God. Right. So, you know, my prayer is, if you need prayer on any of this, if you feel like God spoke to you about redeeming the time, your talents, your treasures, <coughs> find a place to pray. You don't have to pray now. You can pray later. But just seek God about it. I'm sure we all got something we need to get right with God about. Oh, yeah. You know? Is anybody here perfect? No. no. Spotless? No. Sinless? No. Then you got something to pray about. That's right. But I thank you for your time. I hope you got something out of that. Yeah. You know, uh, I just hope you got something out Amen. of that. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Good job. Good, job. Good, job. Good, job. Good word. Amen. Amen. What a word. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Somebody quote this Bible after me. From the rising of the sun. To the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is. To be. Praised. Are we going to do that? Amen. Amen. If that's a statement that was made then, the word was as good now as it was then. Right? Do you agree with that? Amen. Oh, my God. That was even, yeah, that's too loud for me, too. Good, though. But great, great word to redeem the time. Yes. How many is going to start redeeming? Amen. Yep. Amen. Yes? Amen. Yep. Good, good, good word. I agree with him now. Yep. That's been up there four years. Four years. And I don't think it's changed less than a thousand dollars in four years. I mean, I can only say so much, right? I did it. I took it as far as I can. They're waiting on me to say go, but I can't say go until I can pay for it. I can take a loan and get it done, but I'm not going to run this church in debt either. Amen. Because if we're in debt, we can't do outreach. That's right. yeah. And I'm not going to pay for a building that we can just occupy and not utilize. That's right. Amen. There's a difference. Yes, sir. Right? We have to be frugal. We have to be good stewards of his time and money. Right? Yes. So I agree. If we want it done as a people, we'll get it done together. If not, I put it out there. It ain't on me. I know that. It ain't on me. So... Let's do what we can. I did put that out there, four and twenty-four. I would that's a challenge that I gave the entire church to have four people, each person represent four people this year in the house of God. Is that hard to do? Nope. Do you know four people? Yeah. Do you realize that if we did that, we would have no choice but to do that? That's right. If everybody in this church committed to four people, this place would be packed. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So that's my challenge to GBC for 2024. And we've already went through month, one month. This is the last Sunday in January. I know all you people where they at. <laughs> right? I look at your old mugs every week. <laughs> Right? Mark, do I see you every week? That's right. <laughs> Mark even sees me through the week, don't you? <laughs> yeah? You have to watch me? Yeah. I see Mark on his daily walk. He walks right by my house every day. <laughs> And you walk at the cemetery, because yeah. I go there to pray a lot. Same here. Yeah. <laughs> did you get anything out of today? Amen. I think that's good instruction. I think Jerry did a great, great job. Give him a hand. Good hey, job, Jerry. Now, I've tried to do this twice. Third time's a charm. Right, Jerry? Mm -hmm. So next Sunday morning, we will be setting aside for his ordination. For him to be licensed. Yay. 
You think he deserves it? Yeah. I think he's done a great job. I think that even when I had to step away and do other things, representing you in other places, preaching and stuff like that, he stepped up and fulfilled that role. And I think. Oh, he was the greatest. Thank you. Be quiet. <laughs> but I do think that he has exemplified that role biblically, yes. and I think that he has executed and he is well qualified to do so. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? So I will be honored to have him representing GBC in that capacity. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, I may not always be here. You don't know that. I may be dead tonight. You don't know. There has to be somebody to carry the torch. Yes. There has to, it cannot stop. Here's the thing that we ran into for four years, and I don't mean this in an ugly way or a bad way. I don't because, as you know, I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful to do what I do. But the thing is, I should not be the only one. That's right. I should not be the only one to bear that. Why? Because if I die, what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. True. It just stops. There has to be somebody to come right behind to be able to carry the torch that was started. Is that not true? Yes, sir. So I believe that we are headed in that area, and I think that's a good, good blessing for you, for the church, right? Amen. Say yes. Yes. Now, this is true, right? Good. And I won't have to preach all the time. I can say, Jerry, I'm tired. Preach today. I already do that, though, don't I? <laughs> yeah, that's all good. But then to be official. He does a good job. He does. I'm proud of him. I think he does a great, great job. There, I, you can tell when somebody studies what they're doing. You can tell that they've looked into it. And I agree, Terry. You don't need to be teaching. I work her to death on this stuff. Y'all know that? I really do. I mean, a lot of the behind us, you don't see it, but what I get up here and do, she does a lot of that. I write it down, or I tell her what to do, and she puts it up there. But that takes time to do. She does a good job on that. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah, that was a compliment. Take it. I don't give those out often, so enjoy it. <laughs> uh, good job, Terry. Way to go, Terry. Yeah. 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 I didn't mean for all of that. <laughs> but she does. She does a good, good job. We got good people in this church. I'm proud of them. And uh, I, like I said, I think our best days are ahead. They're not behind us. They're ahead of us. I'm proud of who's here. I think that there's been an awesome revelation of the spirit that's moved in the last several weeks. Yep. I'm just glad to be here. Amen. 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 There you go. Go forth, be blessed. Also, don't forget, no Bible study Wednesday at the Grove. There will be here. Yes. I already know what I'm doing. Uh, matter of fact, how many of you have struggled with things that you've done in the past? I'm, everybody in here? Yeah. Something that you feel forgiveness is there, but you can't get over it. That's right. right? Yeah. It's haunting, yes. mm -hmm. daunting, even paralyzing. Mm -hmm. Right? So put it out there. I'll put it out probably Monday. Wednesday night, I'm going to give a little lesson on forgiveness for yourself. For past mistakes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm going to do Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I, I've been looking into that. So I think we need to hit that. Because I do think some people <coughs> stumble on those issues. <coughs> right? Yep. Anybody ever made a mistake? Oh, yeah. Or are you perfect? No. All you self-righteous hypocrites. Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, right? Mm -hmm. yes, so let's go. We're, we'll, we're going to do that Wednesday night. I think that's what we're going to do. 
All right? So put it out there. If you know somebody that's struggling with those types of things, no matter where it's at, it could be, who knows? I mean, it's a, there's a mirror of things you can throw out there. Gambling, TV, sports, betting, and, and it could be anything, right? Uh, if you know somebody that's having issues in that area and they're searching for the revelation of truth, that's a message Wednesday night that they will want to hear. So uh, make sure that you invite somebody to come out and we'll go through the pages of God's word and we'll get some clarity to move forward. Mm -hmm. Right? Amen. And we'll throw it out there. And let's forget about junk and go forward, right? Amen. Cash, you good? Oh, yes. All right, I have to clear it with you. Are we ready to close? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I look at Mary, she's ready for all hearts and minds clear. <laughs> I didn't do it to you tonight. <laughs> Being nice. We got still set to you. We made all of it. You did you? I want to say something real quick. Um, my sister has been gone for seven and a half years, darling. Yeah. She gets to come home Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock. So Amen. we are Amen. extremely excited about that. She'll be here Wednesday. She'll be here Wednesday. Amen. Yes. Devin's mom. Amen. Devin's mom? Devin's mom. Yep. So, Amy, right? Amy, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we're really looking forward to that because Amen. we are. She's coming here. She's going to attend church here. Amen. Um, so just be praying about that. It's going to be different. It's going to be a change for all of us. She's been gone for a while. She is my only sister. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just I praise God that He answered that prayer. She gets to come home to all of us. And uh, yeah. Amen. There's another one of you. Yeah. You haven't seen nothing yet. <laughs> nothing alike. We don't know we don't. sisters. She, she looks like mom. I look like my dad. But yeah, she's awesome just like me. She, she looks like you with long hair. Our grand, my son and um, daughter-in-law and grandbaby will be here too. Yeah. Yeah. Bob will be getting them today. Good. They're coming here. Hey, you know what Jerry was talking about tonight? You know, uh, I was... Back in the old school, back in the old church, but how I grew up, that popcorn service he was talking about, mm -hmm. it was generally like on Saturday, because back then, you think you got it bad? I know. I was in church Wednesday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and Sunday night. Yep. That's, how it, that's how it was. Cool. All we get on. You know? Then yeah. special times. Yeah, and then spe revivals on top of that, singings on top of that. Churches went away with that, but it used to be Saturday, Sunday morning, Sunday night. All weekend long, we were in church. Yep. But like on a Saturday night or a Sunday night, <laughs> Pastor Petrie, you'll see him next month on the 11th. He would open it up. He'd come up and said, you know what? We're changing it tonight. He said, if God is God to you, let it be known. Amen. That's pretty strong. Yeah, yeah. He said, if nobody has a testimony in here, we ought to padlock the door and go home because there's nothing to it if God is not God to you. That's, mm -hmm. right. yeah. that's strong words. But that's how I grew up. Yeah. You'll, you think I can't wait till he comes? He'll throw it at you. Yeah. Right? And I feel we need to do that. So you never know. We want this sun, Sunday night or something coming up. We may do that. We may open that up to do that. We'll just sing and testify mm -hmm. yep. and, and fellowship. Yep. Yep. Amen. Right? Yep. It doesn't have to be formal all the time. Mm -hmm. He said come and enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Yep. Right? How do you do that? By telling what God's done. I'm thankful for what you've done for me. Because you know every one of us is an ambassador of the gospel of truth. Amen. Yep. Right? It's not left up to me. It's not left up to him. Everybody in here has been given the ministry of reconciliation. Everybody in here has been given the gift of taking somebody, the word to somebody for salvation. That's right. Yep. Right? Yep. And the greatest way to witness that truth is by your testimony. That's right. Amen. Yep. Because if you don't have one, you ain't got nothing. That's right. That's, that's strong, man. Good, if you don't have a testimony, you ain't got nothing. Right. And she'll be here Wednesday, and Wednesday's my 30th day. So, yep. yep. Awesome. I'm excited. Yep. yep. Amen. 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 <laughs> I'm very proud of her. She's, she's come a long way. Yep. 
I am very proud of yeah. her. Very Long way. That worked. I was looking for clarification. She's looking at me like, mm -hmm. I didn't know. Yeah, she does. It's not my testimony. That's right, sister. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Are you yeah. blessed? Yes. Amen. Amen. Are you happy? Amen. Are you favored? All hearts and minds clear. Amen. Stand to your feet. <laughs> Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this assembled council that's in this house here tonight. God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy. All day today, Father, we thank you for the word that has come alive. God, and it has been manifested with truth and righteousness. God, that it may be plentiful upon our life. God, help us go forth from here and exemplify you. Less of me and more of you. Father, create within us the kind of spirit and the kind of heart and be the kind of people that you can bless. Be with each and every one of these people as they leave here tonight to their respective places until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Be blessed.